Hello, my name is Ryan Narayan. I'm here at the Kaspersky Security Symposium in Munich uh, with a very, very exciting guest, Christian Funk, virus analyst in the Kaspersky Research and Analysis team, responsible for uh, Central Europe. Christian is here to talk to us about uh, virtual goods, online games, and malicious activity that target online games. Christian, can you start off with a sense of uh, statistics? Uh, what are we seeing around uh, online ga malicious activity in online games, online gaming trojans? Are we seeing a growth? Is it flattening? What, what can you tell us around what, what you're tracking and what you're seeing? So today we see almost 1.9 million uh, unique samples targeting just online games. And at the moment it's just flattening down a bit. So everything started off in uh, the first half of 2008. So a lot of popular games were released at that time. And we saw another huge increase in the first half of 2009. So same reason here, a lot of popular online games were, re were released at that time. Are there specific geographic regions that are more targeted than others? Well, w where, are they, where are the cyber criminals going after? Where, where are the end users? Uh, in terms of geography? So, um, China as a country is, is leading here, so we see more than 870,000 attacks per day mm -hmm. just uh, originating from online uh, gaming uh, samples, and uh, a lot of other uh, Asian countries. And um, the number of attacks are, is, is much higher there uh, because of several reasons. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, those countries have a very high population, so, and the gaming is very popular there. But on the other hand, um, those countries are often less developed countries, so people are less will willing to, to spend money on security solutions. Uh, then they have uh, often uh, pirated Microsoft Windows versions, so right. they're not able to, to update them sense. and to fix uh, vulnerabilities. Is it a big problem here in Europe? Uh, in Europe, the numbers are uh, a lot uh, smaller. But uh, but still very very high. For Smaller example, by comparison to China. By comparison, but, but uh, if you take, for example, uh, Germany, G Germany uh, mm -hmm. suffers from more than sixteen thousand uh, attacks per day. Attacks per day. Per, per day, yes. And this is growing, getting smaller. At the moment, it's it's uh, getting smaller, but. Uh, in the near future, we have uh, some gaming highlights, for example, World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Then we have Diablo 3. Uh, so uh, the number of uh, malware samples is increasing, definitely. What's the motivation? There's a huge economic factor attached to this. Talk to me a little bit about what exactly goes on behind the scenes uh, when it comes to cybercrime and online games. So first of all, uh, many gamers are willing to, to, to spend real money for virtual goods to pay virtual items, mm -hmm. virtual heroes, and whole accounts. Well, what is a virtual item for the, for the average end user that's probably not online, not playing online games? What exactly is a virtual good? Okay, so online gaming uh, is, is about having a hero, a virtual hero, mm -hmm. uh, which is supposed to get more and more powerful mm -hmm. by the hero level and the equipment, uh, for example, the, the weapon, the armory, mm -hmm. it has to be very high end to, and to be, uh, mm -hmm. in order to be competitive. So uh, the cyber criminals saw that uh, a lot of money is involved in online gaming, and this was the point where they entered the market and uh, they were programming um, malware, targeting the, the gamers, and right. just to fish off the credentials. So the theory is you're playing an online game in World of Warcraft or any online game, and your machine gets infected with a specific piece of malware targeting that game, whether it's to steal the virtual goods to steal your username and password, steal the entire identity of that online gamer. Exactly. And then the equipment or the virtual goods stolen from you are then resold online and or at, at eBay and at uh, additional forums. That's the concept. Exactly, yes. So the virtual goods are sold, as you said, on online uh, auctioning platforms, on uh, websites, on the internet, mm -hmm. or uh, online forums. Talk to me about the economics, what kinds of prices we are seeing and how much money is actually being made. Okay, so for uh, the real high-end items, uh, they cost uh, 500 euros, 1,000 euros, maybe over uh, 1,000 euros. So the, pr the prices for them are really, really high and people are willing to spend it because they uh, see online gaming as a hobby. And hobby, right. yeah, it costs money. Like in, in real life, pay people pay high prices for uh, sports cars for uh, watches or to go cycling, I mean. 
Have you done any research actually tracking uh, a particular online seller of, of virtual activity to see exact kind of get a sense of an estimate of how much money is actually being made? Give me some information on that. Actually, I, r I really did that, and uh, I was monitoring eBay for uh, 30 days and searched for um, ended items only, um, which says, yeah, but a World of Warcraft accounts in it. And uh, the total market uh, revenue was uh, 220,000 euros in just those 30 days. Now keep in mind that I only searched for uh, World of Warcraft related items, and I only monitored one sales channel, right. eBay. So the, the, the real... Uh, uh, market size is a lot higher than that. Are there one, is there one game that's targeted more than another game? But it, are there like a top five games that are targeted? What are, what are those games? So, um, World of, of course Warcraft obviously is the obviously big one. Yeah. So, uh, of course the cyber criminals go for the, the, the real uh, popular games, like you said, right. World of Warcraft. Then we have uh, the Maple Story, which is almost unknown uh, in Europe and in uh, the US. Uh, but it's highly popular in, in Asia, so it's also mm -hmm. absolutely targeted. Then we have Ion, Perfect World, mm -hmm. uh, Guild Wars, for example. I think those are the, the ha top five. Are the online, in addition to you know, using security software, using good internet surfing activities, you know, being careful about clicking on malicious links in emails and so on, are the online games themselves doing anything, uh, the vendors of the online games doing anything to protect identities, uh, protect people's accounts, protect people's goods? Of course, uh, also the vendors put a lot of en effort into that uh, to, to prevent uh, that kind of fraud, especially bl uh, Blizzard is putting a lot of effort into that. So they say... Uh, if Blizzard you're, if is a company that makes World of World Warcraft. World of Warcraft, exactly, in Diablo 2. And um, they say, if you lost your account or it, it got stolen, uh, just tell us and we will try everything to get it back with the items and everything will be fine. But, but restore it back to its original state. Exactly, yes. So people are being, I mean, if you, if you detect that your stuff is stolen, you're, there's a chance that you can get your stuff back. There is a, a real chance to get it back, yes, that's true. Uh, any predictions for what we'll be seeing in the next year or two years around uh, virtual games, online gaming malware? Uh, well, the nature of online gaming uh, or ro role-playing games uh, hasn't really changed in the last few years. Mm -hmm. That means for cyber criminals they, that they can use uh, the same methods in, this, uh, in the next few years, but uh, as I said, uh, uh, those malware samples get more and more sophisticated. So already nowadays we, we see that uh, those uh, samples have uh, sophi sophisticated technologies like uh, rootkit mm -hmm. or uh, the samples are also encrypted. So cyber criminals are putting a lot of effort into that. Is there an ebb and flow within uh uh, malicious activity related to when a new game is released? Do you see more activity versus, uh, you know, an older game that may not have been released a long time ago? Do you expect that with the release of updates for new games and with, uh, you know, consumer interest very high around the release of new games, do you expect to see more malware uh, attacks? Do you expect it to stay the same? What are you expecting to see? I think the number of uh, malware attacks will increase definitely in the next time when, when uh, new popular games are, will, will be released or hit the market. Right. Like, for example, uh, World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Then we have uh, Diablo 3. So, or also when other older games are uh, somehow renewed by updates and people are, are seeing that and say, oh, well, let's join that game again. And the cyber criminals are also monitoring that and go after those games. Thank you very much, Christian. Really, really interesting stuff. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on this webcast around online games and malicious activity around virtual worlds. Uh, this is Ryan Orion at the Kaspersky Security Symposium here in Munich.